Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Katherine Hamilton. I am a headache specialist at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I will be talking tonight about a topic that's an interest to, to me and I think that's very applicable to many patients that I see, which is sleep and headache. And specifically, I'll be talking first about the relationship between sleep and headaches. And then I will focus a lot on practical tips for how to get a better night's sleep, how to fall asleep and stay asleep. So I know people are starting to join. Once again, to introduce myself, my name is Dr. Katherine Hamilton. I'm a headache specialist at University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And with that, I will get started. So first I wanna talk a little bit about the relationship between sleep and headaches. And I'll focus on, on um, talking a little bit about migraine. But there is a, a strong relationship between sleep and headaches, both going in both directions. So migraines can be triggered by changes in sleep and similarly migraines and headaches can cause insomnia and other sleep problems. So specifically there are certain sleep disorders that can cause headaches and that you want to keep being aware of so that if you have headaches that seem to fit in the pattern um, you can ask your neurologist or potentially see a sleep specialist about it. So the main one that I'm talking about is obstructive sleep apnea, which can cause morning headaches. And obstructive sleep apnea is quite common and is probably underdiagnosed. It can affect up to 15 to 20 percent of middle-aged adults. And so recognizing when you might have this issue is really important because it's a very treatable condition and it can both help daytime headaches and prevent other health consequences down the line. So what is sleep apnea? A little bit about that. Uh, basically, it's when the muscle, when the tissues, are, most common causes uh, from the tissues around the neck constricting the, um, the airway at night when you sleep so that there are periods of time where the airway is closed off and you're not getting enough oxygen. And this is, is linked to headaches, specifically a uh, person with sleep apnea would tend to have headaches when they first woke up, lasting for maybe a few hours. Um, and the reason why it leads to headaches is a little unclear. It's thought that maybe it's because of the low oxygen levels, you're not getting enough oxygen. Maybe it's just due to the sleep disruption, um, but, but it does seem to have a higher rate of morning headaches um, than in the general population. Um, and so things you want to look out for if you're having morning headaches um, are things like do you snore at night or has a bed partner even noticed that you've stopped breathing? Um, sleep apnea tends to be more common in people who are overweight or obese, although it can, can certainly occur in people who are not. Um, and so specifically a thick neck circumference um, or obesity is a risk factor you want to be aware of. If you're finding that you're getting a lot of sleep, but you're really, really tired still during the day, that could also be a sign of sleep apnea. We call that excessive daytime somnolence. So if you have any of these symptoms, if you snore at night, if you're um, overweight, that might be something to ask your, uh, your neurologist or your primary care doctor about, and they can refer you to a sleep study to get diagnosed with sleep apnea. It's a very treatable uh, condition. The most common treatment is a mask called a CPAP. Um, also, lo losing weight can help and other, other techniques like that. Um, so that, that's an important thing to be aware of that could be a cause of headaches. Um, also, insomnia and, and poor sleep in general is, is a trigger for headaches and migraines. Migraines are, tend to be triggered when the body is kind of out of homeostasis, which means anytime things are adjusted. So whether it's skipping a meal or not getting enough to drink. So certainly sleep changes falls in that category, not getting enough sleep 
or getting too much sleep or just changing up your sleep schedule, that can be a major trigger for migraine in many patients. Um, so it's important to be aware of that. And so if you have insomnia, that's something that you want to address. You know, it's often we think of insomnia as just a symptom, um, but it's actually a, you know, a problem in and of itself that we need to focus on and treat. So that's another relationship. And like I said, the, the relationships go both ways. And sometimes migraine and headaches can actually cause insomnia because you're in pain, uh, because of the medications that you're taking. Cer certain ones can affect sleep. So uh, it's a two-way street in that sense. And then lastly, just to be aware of, there are certain disorders called circadian sleep disorders that basically what happens is a person is either falling asleep late and waking up late, much later than a normal person, or they're falling asleep early and waking up very early. Um, and those are also important to recognize because they could similarly be leading to disrupted sleep, trigger, therefore triggering headaches and migraines because everyone's kind of forced on this usual, usual sleep schedule. And if your body actually wants to go to sleep earlier or later, that could be a real issue. So those are some sleep problems to be aware of that could be contributing to your headaches. Um, and another topic, another category I just wanted to bring up is the relationship between medications for migraine and headache and sleep problems, because there are certainly a lot of medications that we use for the treatment of migraine, particularly the preventive medications, the daily medications that can affect sleep. So um, propranolol uh, is one which is in the class of beta blockers that can cause insomnia and nightmares. Um, and then there are some others. So also important to be aware of if you're prescribed a new medication by your, uh, for your headaches, you wanna be aware that it could have effects on your sleep. So, so that's a little bit about the relationship between sleep and headaches. And now I'm going to focus on talking about some practical tips about how to get a good night's sleep. So insomnia is very, very common, um, especially in this modern technology age with all of our, all of the stimulation around us. It can be very hard for many people to fall asleep and stay asleep. And like I talked about, that can be a huge trigger for migraine and headaches. So Really focusing on the insomnia can be very important, a very important thing to do, and it's something we often focus on um, when we, in our new patient and follow-up visits for headache patients. Um, so insomnia, sometimes there's an underlying health cause that needs to be treated, like thyroid problems or something like that. But if, if those have been ruled out, you really want to focus on um, um, what we call primary insomnia and focus on treating that. So first and foremost, you want to have good sleep hygiene. So what does that mean? It's a term that you might have heard doctors use or um, read, read about on the internet. So just as hygiene is involves having a certain routine and being cl clean, um, similarly sleep hygiene is, is kind of a certain regimen you want to get used to to try to improve your sleep. So some things, some, some basic rules of thumb for sleep hygiene include keeping a regular sleep schedule. So going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time every morning, trying to get about the same number of hours of sleep a night. That's really important, especially for patients with migraine because any changes in your sleep schedule and that homeostasis of the body can be a big trigger. So that's important. And you don't want to spend too much time in bed. So if you're going to bed at 9 p.m. and you're still, and you're finding you're just not falling asleep, you're still um, feeling revved up, you want to get up, get up from bed if, if you're not falling asleep in half an hour or so and, and do something like reading or, or listening to music, something relaxing, and then try to go back to sleep. Because when you're lying in bed and not sleeping, you start to associate your bed with a stressful state, a, a state where you're not resting. And so it can, actually, it can actually provoke anxiety surrounding your bed and sleep. So you wanna, you wanna actually try to limit your time in bed as much as possible. You only wanna 
be in bed um, at times when you're sleeping. So, so there's that. Um, you want to also be aware of things you're consuming, or especially around bedtime. So certainly minimizing caffeine, really trying not to drink caffeine for at least eight hours before you go to bed. And of note, a lot of migraine medications, especially ones over the counter like Excedrin, have caffeine in them. So you want to be aware of that. That can contribute to insomnia. Um, uh, similarly, alcohol, even though it can kind of make you sleepy, you want to avoid drinking it um, for a few hours before bedtime. Nicotine, smoking cigarettes is a stimulant, so, so that can also contribute to insomnia. Um, so trying to minimize those substances that might be keeping you awake. And like I mentioned, we're in a world where there's lots of stimulation, lots of technology. So we're losing the distinction really between daytime and nighttime and we're, we're, our brains are kind of on almost 24 seven. So you wanna try to minimize stimulation before bedtime. So set aside about an hour or so before you go to bed where you're, you're gonna try to wind down, shut down. So, so you don't wanna be doing a lot of work, stressful things, um, maybe not watching the news or, or something that might make you stressed out um, and trying to minimize blue lights before bedtime, which can disrupt your body's natural circadian system um, and, and can have effects on your melatonin, which is a natural sleep, um, which is a, a hormone that we produce that promotes sleep. Um, so you want to try to minimize screen time or at least switch off your phone or your computer to a, a non-blue screen mode. Uh, so that can be very helpful. Um, certainly if you're finding that you're laying in bed and your thoughts are racing, um, that's even more reason to have a wind down. Um, you can do things like meditation. Um, there are certain meditations where you focus on relaxing each part of your body um, in sequence. And uh, those are, are very helpful for kind of relaxing your body before sleep. Um, and then making sure your bedroom environment is the best for promoting sleep. So making sure it's cool, um, ideally in the 60s, the temperature should be um, because your body should really cool down um, during sleep and making sure it's quiet, dark. Uh, those, those are some, some basic sleep hygiene tips and, and a lot of resources exist online or you can ask your doctors more about that. Um, and one important thing that you could try is keeping a sleep diary. So we often tell patients to keep a headache diary to keep track of their headaches and their triggers. Similarly, it can be helpful to keep a sleep diary where you, you know, people think that they, you know, have a good sense of how they're sleeping and what's going on. But actually when you write it down, it can be very illuminating. Um, and if you, if you keep track of things like when you're drinking caffeine, when you're taking naps, um, and, and when you're getting into bed and when you're getting out of bed, um, that can be helpful. So keeping a sleep diary for a couple weeks um, is a good idea. So when should you seek help from a doctor um, for insomnia? Uh, if you've tried a lot of these basic techniques and you're still having a lot of trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, um, that would be uh, something to, to definitely mention to your doctor. Um, th there are certain therapies, um, non-pharmacologic or non-medication therapies, specifically cognitive behavioral therapy has very good evidence for helping with insomnia. So that's something that your, your doctor could refer you for. There's also cognitive behavioral therapy apps even. Um, and sometimes sleep aids can be helpful, both prescription or over the counter. But usually it's not a great idea for long term. Um, it's more like a quick fix. Um, and uh, a lot of them can have side effects, including headache, actually. So you, you know, ideally want to address it without using medications, although there are certain circumstances where, um, you know, you might want to, your doctor would prescribe you something or recommend something for the short term. So um, those are... That's kind of what I had prepared in terms of talking about the relationship between headache and sleep.